Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of RNMs of which my system the customary court I am convinced the way one plays chess always reflects the player's personality if something defines their character then it will also define their way of playing from the russian grandmaster and former classical world chess champion vladimir kramnik a brief review of the last part where we went through games number 23 and 24 of the illustrative game section of the book as advised by nemzovich at the end of chapter 9 the pawn chain and with that concluded our study of part 1 of the book the elements <clears throat> So now moving further into the book we begin part 2 of the book called position play which is divided into 6 chapters we shall start the first chapter which is called the conception of position play and the problem of the center nemsevich writes of the chapter as follows sets forth as introduction my conception of position play and carries further the treatment of the problem of the center He begins the chapter with the topic number 1 the mutual relations between the treatment of the elements and of position play Nemzovich writes As the reader will soon see my conception of position play is based for the greater part on the knowledge we have laboriously wrung from our consideration of the elements <clears throat> especially is this true of the devices of centralization and of restraint which we have outlined the connection which thus exists has the advantage that is must give to this book a certain unity of structure which can only be of benefit to the reader it would however be an error on the reader's part to indulge in the expectation that the exploration of the spirit of position play cannot now afford them any further difficulties worth mentioning for firstly position play contains other ideas than those we have met so far as for instance the law of overprotection which i discovered or the very difficult strategy of the center while secondly the actual transference of the ideas which we have learned from the elements onto a new field that of position play is difficult enough the degree of difficulty is much the same as that which faces a composer who wishes to adapt a violin sonata for a full orchestra however unchanged the theme the motives may be the whole must gain in depth and breadth let us explain this by a concrete case in chess for instance restraint in the elements this touches a comparatively small field a passed pawn is to be checked or an enemy pawn chain which has become free to move is to be prevented from advancing in position play on the other hand the restraint theme makes a much more impressive appearance Now it is often a whole wing which must be held in check. In games in which the player who is putting restraint on their opponent is scoring their team very heavily. I have in mind for instance my game against Joner, game number 35 of the illustrative game section. We have the whole board, both wings, every corner taking up the theme and blaring it forth. The second case is even worse for the student for here the theme appears in epic breadth with a series of seemingly purposeless moves to and fro mixed with it this kind of maneuvering corresponds in a way to the accompaniment or supporting musical part in music many people hold both this maneuvering and accompaniment as things which may be dispensed with Many lovers of chess go so far as to characterize this moving to and fro as a fruit of decadence or luxurious self-indulgence. In reality, however, this maneuvering often enough provides the only strategical, be it noted, strategical, not merely psychological way of throwing in 
the scale a slight advantage in terrain and consequent capacity of moving our troops more quickly from one wing to the other. Here Nemzevich moves to the next topic, number 2. On certain noxious or unpleasant weeds which choke a proper understanding of position play, namely A. The obsession to be forever doing something which haunts so many amateurs and B. The overrating of the principle of the accumulation of small advantages which may inspire the master. Nimzovich writes, there are, it would seem, a number of amateurs to whom position play appears to mean nothing. Twenty years' experience in teaching chess has, however, convinced me that this trouble can easily be removed, since it results from a faulty presentation of the subject. I maintain that there is nothing inherently mysterious in position play, and that every single amateur who has studied my elements in the first nine chapters of this book must find it an easy matter to penetrate into the spirit of this style of play. They have only, number one, to destroy the weeds which perhaps choke their understanding, and number two, to carry out the precepts laid down in the rest of the book. A typical and very widespread misconception is the assumption of many amateurs that each single move must accomplish something directly, so that such a player will only seek for moves which threaten something, or for a threat to be parried, and will disregard all other possible moves, such as waiting moves, or moves calculated to put their house in order, and so on. Positional moves as I conceive them are in general neither threatening nor defensive ones, but rather moves designed to give to our position security in the wider sense. And to this end, it is necessary for our pieces to establish with the enemy's strategically important points or our own. This will be brought out later when we are considering overprotection over and the fight against enemy freeing moves. When a positional player, that is one who understands how to safeguard their position in the wider sense, engages one who is purely a combinational player, the latter, that is the combinational player, who has only attack on their thoughts, is preoccupied with but two kinds of counter moves, and looks only for a defensive move from their opponent or calculates on the possibility of a counter attack. And now the positional player dumbfounds them by choosing a move which will not fit into either of these categories. The move somehow or other brings the positional player's pieces into contact with some key point, and this contact has miraculous effects. Their position is thereby imbued or spread throughout with strength, and the attack on it comes to naught. A similar disconcerting effect is also often produced by a move which protects a point which is under no sort of attack. The position player protects a point not only for the sake of that point but also because they know that the piece which they use for its defense must gain in strength by mere contact with the point in question. This will be considered further under overprotection. And now I will take a game which is an admirable illustration of the very widespread misconception to which I have referred. I had the white pieces against a very well known and by no means weak amateur, who however was under the impression that proper game must take some such course as this. One side castles king side, the other queen side. A violent pawn attack is launched on both sides against the respective castled positions, and he who gets in first wins. We shall see how this amateurish conception was reduced ad absurdum or to the point of absurdity. The game was played in Riga in 1910 and ran 
e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 d4 e takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and d6 this move is quite playable but only in conjunction with a strong defensive structure attainable by say knight f6 bishop e7 castling and rook e8 with pressure on white's e pawn knight c3 knight f6 bishop e2 bishop e7 bishop e3 bishop d7 queen d2 a6 f3 castling short castling long and b5 the attack by black seems hardly in place here so that my opponent's expression now we are in for it charged as it was with the lust of battle struck one as all the prettier i understood him at once he clearly expected the answer g4 with a consequent race between the pawns on both sides according to the motto who gets in first wins what did happen however was knight d5 with this move by which an outpost station in the d file is occupied white obeys another principle of position play namely that premature flank attacks should be punished by play in the center equals to break through in or occupation of the center there followed knight takes on d5 e takes on d5 knight takes on d4 and bishop takes on d4 and white has very much the better game he has a centralized position which cannot be possibly be taken away from him by say bishop f6 f4 rook e8 bishop f3 followed by rook h to e1 and moreover black has a disorganized queen's wing which exposes bad weaknesses for the end game and the moral of the story is do not be always thinking of attack safeguarding moves in the higher sense indicated by demands made on us by the position are often much more advisable another erroneous conception may be found among masters many of these and numbers of strong amateurs are under the impression that position play above all is concerned with the accumulation of small advantages in order to exploit them in the end game this mode of play is said to demand the finest intelligence and also to be aesthetically most satisfying in contradiction to this we should remark that the accumulation of small advantages is by no means the most important constituent of position play we are inclined rather to assign to this plan of operation a very subordinate role moreover the difficulty of this method is very much overestimated and lastly it is not quite easy to see how the pretty storing up of values can be called beautiful does not this procedure remind one in some sense of the activities of some old pinch penny and who would think of calling them beautiful and so we here note the fact that there are quite other matters to which the attention of the position positional player must be directed and which place this accumulation wholly in the shade what are these things and in what do i see the idea of a true position play the answer is short and to the point in a prophylactic moving further nemzovich discusses the third topic my original conception of position play as such the well known idea of the accumulation of small advantages is only of second or third significance 
of much greater importance is a prophylactic applied both externally and internally. My new principle of overprotection, its definition and meaning. Nimzavich writes, As I have several times observed, neither attack nor defense is, in my opinion, a matter properly pertaining to position play which is rather an energetic and systematic application of prophylactic measures. What it is concerned with above all else is to blunt the edge of certain possibilities which in a positional sense would be undesirable. Of such possibilities, apart from the mishaps to which the less experienced player is exposed, there are two kinds only. One of these is the possibility of the opponent making a freeing pawn move. The positional player has accordingly so to arrange their pieces that enemy freeing moves may be prevented. In connection with which it is to be noticed that we must examine every case that arises to see whether the freeing move in question really is freeing. For as I pointed out in my article on Dr. Tarash's article, die modern shah Pate, the saying all is not gold that glitters applies to freeing moves many there are which only lead to an unfavorable premature opening of the game whereas other freeing moves should be considered as normal reactions and as such must be calmly accepted for it were a presumption to fight to uh, to wish to fight against natural phenomena in spite of the fact that freeing moves will be considered in detail in another place under restraint, it will not be amiss to give here two illustrations. From these examples, we shall see that not only every freeing move need to be prevented. For an example of an incorrect freeing move, see the position on board. In similar positions, the move E5 would probably be classed under freeing moves for it opens up black's otherwise cramped game and in addition stands for the action in the center positionally indicated as a countermeasure to the encircling movement which white is striving for on the queen's wing nevertheless white rightly plays here b4 instead of a rook e1 as will be seen so b4 e5 b takes on e5 knight takes on e5 bishop f4 knight takes on f3 check queen takes on f3 queen d8 and h3 followed by rook a to d1 and the occupation of the square d4 blockading point by bishop or knight with superior game for white, black was to start with behind in tempi, hence the failure of black's freeing maneuver. Our second example shows us that it is not possible permanently to hold up a freeing advance for which in the nature of the things the time is ripe. Our object must therefore in similar cases be limited to making the freeing maneuver as difficult of execution as possible. Nor must we under any circumstances persist in the attempt, impossible of achievement from the start, to stop such an advance e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop e7 d4 d6 d5 and knight b8 the pawn chain made up of the e and d pawns will make white strive for c4 c5 Black for f5. Forcible measures such as say bishop d3, knight f6, h3, castling and g4 
would not be in keeping with the position. On the other hand, bishop d3, knight f6, c4, castling, knight c3, knight e8, and queen e2 would seem to be ind indicated in order in reply to f5 to undertake the operation. e takes on f5, bishop takes on f5, bishop takes on f5, rook takes on f5, and knight e4. Alright, uh, we conclude this part of Aaron Abzavich My System here and we shall continue onwards from the next part. Uh, here is a look at the recent channel support from my Twitch stream. Several new supporters, Mr. Swift Tickle, Jay Cheatham, Quaglon and Dragon Chess Probot King. Mr. Swift Tickle and Quaglon are both fellow chess streamers. I will post a link to their streams in the video description. Do check them out. Thank you for the kind support everyone. Much appreciated. Alright, till next time. Take care.